rather doubt that tonight's report has really gotten to you yet. Oh, you're against quacks, all right, I imagine, but you may be slightly amused, too, to think that anyone could be taken in by such fantastic pictures. What you're about to see is not fantasy, it's reality. Have you ever seen a guy in a fitness ad and said, I want to look like that guy? We all have at one time or another bought into the idea, if you take this pill, buy this machine, or drink this stuff, you're going to look like that guy in the ad. Well, ultimately, you fail, only to try another product with the same results. Up until I started this documentary, I had tried all the diets and special workouts and never came close to looking like that guy in the ad. After years of disappointing results, it became clear to me something was missing from the ads. There had to be a secret the fitness industry was keeping to itself. After all, if we all became lean, they'd be out of a job. That's me, Stuart McDonald. I'm probably what many would call a renaissance man. I own a seasonal haunted house, I'm a professional magician, volunteer firefighter, and I own a video production company. I'm also unhappy with my self-image. I'd given up the idea of ever looking lean and ripped until a guy from one of those ads actually opened up a gym in my hometown. And that's the guy, Jeff Willett, an IFBB professional bodybuilder and Team Universe overall champion. What makes Jeff unique is he built his body without the use of drugs or steroids, a seemingly impossible feat by today's standards. He is without a doubt the world's greatest drug-free bodybuilder. I joined Jeff's gym at a time when I was overweight and depressed about my self-image. In other words, a perfect candidate for self-improvement. Now I asked Jeff if he'd take on my challenge to look like him in all those ads. He said yes, but be prepared. Had I known the secret to getting this lean would set me back $4,000 in supplements, tanning products, gym memberships, living like a hermit, eating tons of broccoli, and causing countless weeks of stress among family and friends, I probably would have never attempted this project. Now before I started, I wanted to get to know Jeff a little bit better, talk about bodybuilding, and most of all, I wanted to see his refrigerator. So I paid him a visit. Hey Stuart, come on in. Hey Jeff. Good to see you. Welcome to my home. I know, <laughs> a bodybuilder's home. Yeah, this is it. Not quite as scary as maybe you anticipated. <laughs> no, no, I, and I can't wait to see the inside of the refrigerator. <laughs> well, let the games begin. All right, yeah, let's sit down and talk about a few sure. things. Well, Jeff, uh, um, so how did it all get started? I mean, uh, you know, did your parents have an influence? Um, you know, what gets a person to start fr at ground zero, I want to be a bodybuilder? I went, there was a local gym in town called The Dungeon, and it was in downtown Adrian, right? Similar to where my gym is now, so that part really has gone full circle. But I started in downtown Adrian, really, at The Dungeon. Uh, my best friend Oliver and I started working out together, and then it just, I really started seeing results. I really started getting drawn into it. I loved how I was feeling, and I went and watched some friends who are actually members at my gym now compete in a contest. My dad took me, saw my first contest, and it was really at that moment, sitting there, and watching them come out on stage that I said this is what I want to do and I just felt amongst anything else I felt I could be great at it you know I just sitting there and watching it, I felt I could be really great at this <laughs> let's see the refrigerator this is the <laughs> inside of uh, you gotta be kidding at least me. this pro bodybuilders refrigerator okay um, I see uh, what appears to be maybe a bottle of wine yep. some pancake syrup <laughs> for just such an occasion, you never know. <laughs> oh, is that your secret formula stuff? That's some right secret there? formula right yeah. here. That, that's some. the famous Now this, this is great though. This is fantastic. No fat, no calorie butter spray. This was great through dieting and is really great on vegetables and has no calories. Okay. Love this. So always got to have that on hand. But mainly, you know, the staples are water and flavored water. So I really eat like one... I eat like one whole food meal a day really when I get home at night. I usually get home from the gym about... Uh, seven o'clock in the evenings and uh, my parents live across the way so like I said I don't cook for myself being that I'm here alone but my mom always has food so I go over there it gives me a chance to talk with them I eat, have a salad uh, I get my vegetables that way and usually have like some type of protein source like lean beef or chicken or turkey that she'll cook up for me so yes I still go do eat my mother's food <laughs> after talking for hours I was hooked Jeff was clearly the guy who had the tools and the knowledge to make me look like that guy in the ad. After all, 
he was the guy in the ad. The next day I was up at 5.30 a.m. on a cold, wintry February, eager to start. And once I got to the gym, I was struck by the image of the man I was about to look like. Then reality hit me. This was going to be a lot of hard work. The first thing Jeff told me was to get the idea out of my head I was going to look like him. It takes a lifetime of dedication and self-sacrifice to have his muscular size. But what he did say is that it's possible for me to look my personal best provided I execute his program in two phases. Phase one was to build muscle through MaxOT training. Don't worry about dieting, just keep a mindful eye on the foods I'm eating for the next 18 weeks. Now Jeff said, I wouldn't look like a fitness model, but I'd have a firm base to build on for phase two. In phase two, we're going to do the same Max OT training, but this time eat strictly like a bodybuilder for 24 weeks. Now if I follow the diet to the letter, Jeff assured me I would do well in a bodybuilding contest with my new lean, ripped and shredded body. But he warned me, looking that lean comes with intense personal sacrifice. With my head clear about what to expect, I wanted to start monitoring fat loss on a scientific level. So I called Dr. Adam Coughlin of Adrian College. What I wanted to know was how fat I was and how much I could expect to lose at the end of phase one and two. I had no idea how painful measuring body fat was going to be. Well, the shirt needs to come off. For education. <laughs> Educational education purposes. All right, we're going to do all the measurements on the right side of the body. Okay. We're going to do the triceps, we're going to do one on the shoulder blade, we're going to do one on the chest, uh, abdomen, superiliac, and one on the mid axillary. After pinching me more times than I would have liked, we put the figures in the computer and the numbers were actually quite shocking. So, right now, based on the seven site skin fold, you're 27.4% fat. <laughs> <laughs> What's the ideal? fat for some guy my size. Your age and and you said you were 42. Mm -hmm. So 50th percentile is right around 21 percent. So 21 percent is what we're shooting for. 50th percentile is? That's about average. That's half the pack. Now I don't consider myself to be a fat guy, but I had no idea just how out of whack my body mass index was. do here is we're going to follow the max OT training system and that stands for maximum overload training and that's how I've trained for the last probably nine ten years I learned it from Paul D'Elia who is the, the owner of AST Sports Science and that's where basically Paul was my mentor and when I moved to Colorado and worked for AST I really delved into the max OT principles and I've used it for myself I've used it to instruct people all over the world through website and, and virtual training if you will and even had camps on it so the reason this is relevant for not just a bodybuilder but anybody looking to get in shape because we're all again it all goes back to building muscle and if you want to get in better shape you have to have a muscle building component to your workout again the biggest mistake people make is an overabundance of sets and reps and exercises we're going to stick with heavier weights we're going to train in a four to six repetition range because overload or the use of a heavier weight is going to best stimulate or signal that muscle to grow so what i want you to do is you're going to handle a weight you can do at least four times on your own but no more than six repetitions so let's say with a bench press for example once you have a weight once you can get it six times on your own that's your signal to bump up the weight mm -hmm. okay and you're always going to increase by the smallest increment possible so if you're using a barbell that means you could increase by two and a half pounds on the side we're going to edge up very slowly but the key numbers to remember here is four to six reps once you get six you got to increase the weight because it's through this continual process of adding more weight or overload over a span of months in this whole 18 week period that's always forcing the body. It's a, it's a whole cycle of stimulus and response. Stimulus through heavy weight or heavier resistance and then response through rest and nutrition and that's the, the muscle building cycle. It's no more complicated than that stimulus and response with the stimulus being the heavy weight. Jeff laid out the whole program for me and even tossed in some diet information just to keep my mind aware of the right foods to eat. My training regimen was actually pretty simple. Monday, back and traps. Tuesday, abs, calves, and shoulders. Wednesday was legs. Thursday was chest. 
and Friday, triceps, biceps, forearms, and abdominals. Jeff even gave me a journal to keep track of my progress, and I had my workout plan in hand. The first day in the gym was all about learning the various lifting techniques and finding my starting weights. I got my drink. <laughs> Good. And Jeff was absolutely helpful with this. Once I had all the lifts down, he set me off on my own like a scared pilot going solo for the first time. All I could think about was being a dork in the gym and having a camera pointed at me didn't help at all. I started taking photos every day to watch my progress. After about a week, I didn't see any change. Now, I knew miracles weren't going to happen, but I thought I'd at least see some progress. So I reported my findings to Jeff, and here's what he said. You know, the visual changes will come over a period of six weeks, probably five, six weeks. You'll probably start to see things more, but initially it's going to be strength gains and just how you're feeling more than anything. With nearly a third of my body consisting of lard and photos supporting it, I was motivated. After two months, I reported the progress to Jeff and Adam. But would the fat loss continue even though the only rule was just to keep a mindful eye on what I was eating? The progress in the photos was starting to build excitement. The reason that's important to note is, is because we are mostly concerned with body composition when you, when you come in here or anybody. And that's why I'm, I'm against that whole biggest loser type of mentality in those type of contests because to me it encourages the wrong frame of mind. We don't care about absolute weight loss, we care about fat loss. And, and now you can see firsthand the dramatic difference between sheer weight and, and body composition. So you, you, you touched on that whole point there, you know, and someone like yourself, not that you have necessarily a lot of weight to lose, but we want to trim that body fat and body composition, reproportion your body, change your physique. And you went from a 27.4% body fat to a 25.8% fat. So you've lost almost a 2% fat. Wow. About two and a half months into the program, I started to derail when it came to eating. With each poorly chosen meal, I felt the need to confess to Jeff. Hey, I don't know, I just needed a dessert for some reason, so I had sweet potato pie. Now, no sweet potatoes are supposed to be good for you, but I wanna see what Jeff has to say, so we'll see you in a few minutes. Turns out Jeff turned into my diet priest, but instead of telling me to do Hail Marys, he'd say, here and there, it's not going to make or break anything, as long as that needs to be more of the uh, exception to the rule. Most of the majority of your day was good, as you said, mm -hmm. maybe, you know, 90% of your day was good. Well, just flip that around. What if 90% if of your day was crap food and you only ate 10% <laughs> good, it's not going to do much for you. Well, conversely, the same is, is true, I think. I am a cookie-holic. That's one of my vices. I love cookies. And... Earlier in the week, I had uh, several cookies, probably more, more cookies than most people will eat sitting down at one time. But for me, it, it really wasn't, you know, a record. <laughs> but I did get tired of eating them. But of course, the last one is, is the best. But what I want to do is I want to find out. See, right now I'm at 25% body fat. I want to find out that in the next two weeks, if really that indulgence is going to affect the, uh, the outcome of uh, the next two weeks. I did a cookie experiment. So who told you to do this experiment anyway? <laughs> I did. Or is that something you just dreamt up on your own? I had dreamt it up bored, on my own. Or... <laughs> well, <laughs> um, nothing I would have advised. Yeah. Uh, that's something that we just don't want to really have to deal with again. And it's, we can control today and today forward. So beating yourself up over what you did or didn't do yesterday doesn't help us today. I did a cookie experiment. Okay. And uh, um, I noticed for about a week that I had a real slowdown in just energy. Yeah, sugar spike, insulin shock, so maybe not to that extreme, but the body still had to process all those cookies, so. And your fat-free mass, you're about almost a, almost a pound heavier of fat-free mass. So, so you're heading in the right direction. Muscle was building, metabolism was getting faster, and the fat was burning off. You know, I was a machine. I was getting stronger, feeling great, until I broke my toe. That is another setback. 
the setback, but now we're going to show you how to do a workaround <laughs> with the setback. Even with a broken toe, I was able to work around it. In about a month, it felt better, but I was very careful. It wasn't until I was halfway through recovery that I realized Jeff had brainwashed me with his positive spin motivation techniques. As the weeks went by, Jeff and I were keeping a close eye on the photos. Jeff was more about the look and how I was feeling, while Adam was completely about the data. I truly turned my body's metabolism in a positive direction and things were going great. I was being productive and then I got sick. Day four. This is getting ridiculous. <coughs> Just hope tomorrow I can go to the gym. This is what I have to do every day. The only thing I don't like is city water mixed with this. Ugh. Okay, something's weird. To make sure you put an equal amount of weight on both ends of the bar. Did you hear my back crack on that one? <laughs> See, that's a mental game. If someone's standing there, you can actually lift more weight. That's it. Oh, now it's time for the longest 16 minutes of every part of my day. Aerobics. So off we go. Drop percent fat, you went from 25 to 24.3, which I think is your lowest so far. And what did we say we needed to get down to 21 when we started this? Oh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think, uh, I think that was your goal. Yeah, we're halfway. Yep. <laughs> Abs, calves, and forearms, one of the most boring days. <laughs> Yeah, what is the, uh, what, what's, what's in that? That's Jeff's secret. <laughs> so you really don't know I what really it is? I do not know. I honestly do not know. He doesn't even tell us. All right. That is a secret. I am, I am going to get, secret. <laughs> I'm going to get the secret yet before this is over with. Low 22. That's what you want it to be? That's what I want it to be. And what if it is? Then... 22.3% body fat. That's a whole percent. Yeah. 23.3, weren't we before? Yeah. Yeah, you were up a little bit two weeks ago. It's a, so you are... So I'm well within easy range of 21%. Yeah. <laughs> Our final day of our 18-week program was approaching fast, and excitement was building. Could I reach 21% body fat? This time, we traveled to Michigan State University, and we used the bod pod. Now, Adam had told me about this thing being the new gold standard in fat measurement. It looks like the spaceship for Mork and Mindy. I mean, literally. We were all nervous the bod pod would find more fat on me than the pinch method. Being a bit claustrophobic, I would have given my left arm to not be in this thing. And uh, we're going to the human what now? Human Energy Research Lab. Human Energy Research Lab, and I'm going to be put inside of a uh, claustrophobic box. We're going to find out how much uh, my body fat is. My prediction is going to be 23, no, uh, 21.7. Twenty-one 
one point seven. Oh, it is kind of close. It's pretty small. Um, this is a signal for panic. <laughs> yep. Yep. Knock on the door. All right. So go ahead and hop in. Probably hands in your lap is the best. You want to minimize as much movement as possible. Whatever position you can sit in for a few minutes without moving. Perfect. I knew it. Second time be a charm. A what percent bet on this? I think this was is going to be higher. I think this is probably going to be 24%. Okay. It says you are 20.8. 20.8? 20.8, yep. Whoa! Wow, you can see the difference. Here's what I found out with phase one. If you follow the MaxOT training method of weightlifting and doing only 16 minutes of really hard cardio, you'll lose fat and gain lean muscle without dieting. Now granted, you won't look like a fitness model either, but you'll lose fat, change your body composition, and feel better about yourself. Now it's time for phase two, and this is where it gets interesting. I'm going to blow away everything you ever thought about those complicated diets, bizarre workout machines, and miracle pills. This is about grabbing the brass ring. I am determined to look like the guy that's in those fitness ads. Time for phase two, diet. Adding the dieting component brings to mind questions like, how hard is this going to be? What will I have to give up? How will I feel? And will I look like Jeff in just six months? Well, five months has passed since phase one ended, and my other job as a haunted house producer consumed the majority of my time, making it harder to eat right and no time for the gym. I became a fast food junkie, gained all my weight back, and more. I was now 204 pounds, I had a 44 inch waist and back to being miserable. I really wanted to know what it takes to look lean and cut like Jeff in all those ads. And phase two is how I'm going to get there. Great things can be achieved naturally if they're done correctly. And my job is to make sure that I lay everything out as ideal as possible for you to do to maximize everything that we can to get extraordinary results. Your job is to execute. It was off to the gym and the kitchen. Like Jeff said, all I had to do was execute the plan. And this would be the phrase I'd hear every single day. I mean, literally, every single day. Now, I started out consuming 2,590 calories per day every day for 30 days. Then Jeff took it down to 2,460 calories. You could really start seeing changes, but I was still far away from a washboard tummy. I'm really glad I took photos during this entire process. Without them, I wouldn't have seen the subtle progress that was happening either daily or weekly. Because of them, I knew this was going to work. I want you to take these, they're three blank cards, and I want you to think of um, a positive affirmation statement that's gonna be a trigger for you. For me, I wrote down, in 2003, I am the Team Universe overall champion and I am a top five USA finisher. And I placed them on my medicine cabinet, one on my computer and one on my refrigerator. So I looked at them constantly all day long. Now, the, the key is you have to set these yourself because you gotta figure out what's gonna be the big trigger for you. But they need to be a, a positive statement, not I want to be Team Universe champion or not I will be, but I am. So I'm going to execute the plan. I'm gonna put this up somewhere. My goal is to place at least in the top five. Eat the right stuff. So in other words, I'm telling myself to eat my favorite movie every day. Jeff was pushing me to lift more weight and intensify every workout, building more muscle and turning up the metabolism. Now just like before, when things started going great, disaster strikes. The thing is, you know, you, you've, are you still able to do back movements? I can still do back okay, movements. Uh, pull down is still weird okay. enough. Pull down still works. Well, here's the good news. If you're still able to do back movements, your biceps are still getting some work. So taking a week off of, or even two, of direct bicep work, the muscle's not going to go anywhere, especially with the great nutritional support that you're getting with your protein and everything. It's not going anywhere. So don't, 
some people will be scared, like, oh, my bicep's gonna shrink. It, it's not gonna happen that fast. So let's take the week off of bicep training. It's gonna get some work when you're doing your back, and I think that that's our best bet at this point, because we don't wanna prolong what's going on here. And it was hurt by lifting too much too soon. That's a pretty common mistake that most people make. But like all injuries, we can find a way to work around it. Somewhere along the line, I became a competitor. The goal to look like Jeff was still up there, but I had to be competitive lean to look like him in those ads. The instinct to win helped drive me forward. And if I won the contest, I certainly would look like Jeff. And the trophy would be a bonus. Win-win. I won't bore you with months and months of workout footage, so let's skip ahead to April. Look at the progress from January. The diet is working wonders. Now I really think I'm gonna pull this off. By April, we were three months into the program. I was down to 1,905 calories per day. No more, no less. The changes in my body and face were becoming very apparent. Calorie adjustments were now coming in every two weeks. Why, well, I never knew that a remedy could be so effective. Uh, remember that uh, bodybuilding contest? It's only a few months away, so the first thing I need to do is take off all my body hair. Easier said than done. Uh, I hate this. I don't believe I'm doing this. Hair and hair less. Remember Dr. Adam Coffin from Adrian College? He hasn't seen me in months and he's been dying to get me back into the bond pod. Now this contraption is really cool, and yes, I did get over the feeling of claustrophobia. Now the last time I was in the bod pod, it said I was 21% fat. Now I'm obviously lower than that, but how much lower was a big shock for the both of us. 13.5. 13.5% body fat? So 13.5% fat, Cow. everything else then is non-fat, so water, muscle, bone, uh -huh. what you had for breakfast, everything. Actually, 1,900 calories places you just above your resting metabolic rate. So if you were to wake up in the morning, not get out of, the bed, out of bed for anything, not to go to the bathroom, not to get anything, you just lay there and watch TV all day, you're burning about 1,800 calories. Wow. Now getting up, just going to the office, sitting behind a desk all day, about 2,300 calories, and the more active you are, the more calories your body's gonna burn. So 1,900 calories is in that weight loss zone for you. Way, way much, yeah. yeah. My dad wasn't too keen about being on camera. Actually, I was shocked he came to the gym at all. I wanted to share this part of the experience with him, hoping he would give me some pointers. But alas, he stood mute for the camera. Now interestingly, my dad actually had an influence on this documentary more than a decade ago. You see, my dad, now a retired professor, taught physical fitness to both Jeff and Adam at Adrian College. Thanks, Dad. Next time, I promise, no cameras. All right, I'm done with my workout. Now Jeff is gonna tell me how much less I have to eat for the next eight weeks. So let's go. Well, we're gonna skim away a little bit. We're gonna take away 130 calories, and like we talked about before, we do this by not just yanking one nutrients, but by skimming totals. So what we're doing, we're taking uh, the last meal, you have nitro, and we're cutting it to a half. So we're taking this, and we're gonna make it a half. So we're gonna do this, we're gonna follow it for two weeks, and then we're gonna take another look at things at six weeks out. And then we'll continue to adjust because it's gotta run and sprint to the finish line. And uh, how are we looking so far? Oh, I think that uh, I'm, I'm very pleased. You know, I think that uh, you've done a great job executing everything. And, and, and what you always wanna do is take advantage of each day that you have, every week that you have, to put yourself in a position to be great on the day of the show. And you're definitely in a position to be great on the day of the show. But the main thing is now is to not coast. Too many people have a tendency they're, they're looking good and they're seeing the results and then they, they kind of let up and they, then they coast. We're not going to do that. We're going to keep sprinting all the way through the finish line because I'll tell you right now, once you get there on that Saturday, it's too late to do anything. Now is when we can make things happen for that day. 
And when you get there to that day, you'll be glad you did all these things because otherwise it's too late and you wish you would have done it. So my job is to make sure you take advantage of these next eight weeks. The next eight weeks. Look at this. That's a quarter cup. That's all I'm going to eat. Drinky, drinky. And uh, we're off to the gym. Ha! Thought I'd leave you behind. Jeff just told me that he has something to show me. <laughs> Jeff? Oh, hello there. <laughs> yeah, check this out. July issue of Muscle Mag. Arnold's article here about Arnold's training tips of visualization and yours truly shown uh, visualizing yeah. Arnold. I have no idea how or why it happened, but Jeff got sucked into the vortex of my documentary and decided to make his last appearance as a guest poser in my contest. Now how cool is that? Seven weeks out now from uh, our competition, and uh, you're gonna teach me some posing. That's right. And uh, the other thing is the mandatories. Yep, we're gonna look at all those, and just basically how to hold them in the most advantageous position for you to display your physique the best, because that's, that's really what it's all about, how to display yourself to all your advantage and strong points. <laughs> Looky here. Pre cut. Pre cut four ounces of beef. Broccoli. The breakfast and lunch and dinner of champions. I can tell you what I've been feeling exhausted at the end of the day. I am so tired. And then I'm getting up at my well, last you know, yesterday I got up at four o'clock in the morning just craving uh, a meal and so some weird stuff is going on I mean I'm really really cutting some major weight right now because at the beginning of the week I was at 168 now 165 it's like wow but anyway I'm gonna fix my morning breakfast. It's off. Off to another day at the gym. Like I said, I went to a restaurant tonight tonight and had what I wanted to eat. I didn't I didn't give any care. I want I just ate what I wanted to eat. Who well there it is folks. That's, that's a six pack right there. It's not enough. I'm having regrets over eating it when, you know, I was eating something that I wanted to eat rather than what I needed to eat. You know, and so I'm feeling upset at myself because now I'm a little, I'm a little concerned that I may have derailed the entire, the entire project, and I feel guilty. Yeah, I'll, I won't, uh, I won't uh, lie about that, because I don't want to let Jeff down, and I don't want to let myself down. You know, and after one meal, I can feel. The um, I can just feel the, the the fluid around my midsection filling up, but it's getting.
scary how hard it is to get as lean as I need to get for that photograph to show you how hard it is to look like those people in those photographs. It's a lie. It's a complete lie. Nobody can live like that and eat like this. Nobody can do it and function. These guys are starving themselves to near death if you are on a diet and if you want to look like that you have no idea what you're in for no idea at all you've got no life you've got uh, no energy you may look great but you're not gonna feel great off to riding my bike to burn off the burrito I'm gonna kind of rant to him a little bit about some of the problems I'm having. At the end of the day, I am just drained, and, I, and it's like I need I need food, and you know the salad is great, but oh yeah. your a person's uh, body naturally doesn't want to really go to these levels of these low levels of body fat so you're kind of fighting and working against every natural instinct that there is right now and this is where your mind has to take over and take your body to a place where it doesn't necessarily want to go it's uncomfortable but that's what's required to get in the type of condition you want to display on a show stage this would not be necessary for somebody who just simply wants to be healthy and leaner as you've seen you saw how you felt coming weeks and looking better and better well now we're taking it those steps further for the next seven weeks. When you wake up, you know, okay, I need to eat this, I need to do two cardio sessions, and I need to, need to do my workout. And if you do all those things, what else, do you get? What else is there, right? right so yeah. don't overcomplicate the day either. Okay. My mentor once told me that you have to feel real bad to look real good. And, you know, there's some truth to that. There is. What a strange sport. It is, and I don't what think a lot of people realize, bizarre. you know, especially you look at the guy, a guy on stage, especially a natural guy who doesn't have any aid of pharmaceuticals to get lean, and they don't realize all the mental games, the, the fatigue, the weeks and months that that person went through to look like that for that one point in time, and now you're getting a great appreciation for that. And before you go up there and get on that bike, I want you to stop and connect to that vision of what you want to look like that day. Think about yourself hitting all those poses that you're supposed to be practicing and think about, think about how you're going to look that day and realize this session of the car, on the bike is one step closer to, to getting that. I achieved my ultimate goal to turn an IFBB pro and doing it professionally or doing it naturally. But anymore, the reward does not, does not outweigh the sacrifice for me anymore. It used to and it did for years, but it just doesn't anymore. And in going through this guest posing, even to get in guest posing shape, I'm not over as far as you are, but I'm in the neighborhood because I want to look great that night and it's eerily reminiscent <laughs> and I'm feeling those things again and I just don't want those restrictions in my life anymore with the direction I'm going now yeah. as a more of a teacher and more of a you know, motivator to help other people who are, want to do that, help them do it, but at this point it's, it's very, very demanding. All right, let's see what you got. We got only six weeks to go from tomorrow, so. A little disappointed. I mean, I think that, I think we, I, I would rather we be a little bit further along right now because I think I wanted to be ready a little bit sooner. Right. But now I think we're really going to have to push all the way, all, all the way, way to that day to, to be your best, you know. And you, you trusted me. Right. So now right. I'm trusting you to do what I'm telling you. You have the option to, to quit at any time. I mean. Well, I'm not going to quit. For you to target the area that, that we need, is going to be a combination of not any more wavering from your nutrition. I've given you a caloric level and we're mm -hmm. going to cut it back a little bit more. You've got to hit that. You know, if, if, you, if you have too many more of these episodes like you had the other night, you know, you might as well, you might as well just call it good, you know, because it's not going to, it's not going to get us there. So you got to be cardio twice a day, right? 16 minute, don't go no longer, but hard. Mm -hmm. The harder you go, the more you're elevating that metabolism, right? So that and stick
to your nutrition. I don't care if you fall down. I don't care if you faint. Stick to the nutrition. All right. No one said uh, this was going to be easy. You right. Know, we're not. We're not in this for for fun. Well, I know. This is. Yeah, the other, you know, the other night when we were up there and I was evaluating Stuart, I just kind of feel like, I don't know, I was maybe a little bit hard on him. I mean, he's doing well, but I just feel like it's, it's, it's my job to make sure that he's still... It was your job to be honest. I'm kind of, in some way, I didn't know what to expect when he started, but I think in, yeah. in a lot of ways it's, it's exceeding my expectations, really, because he's, right. he's really transformed his body. And I'm, 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 I didn't know if he could if he could stick to it. Because right. a lot of people, they, you know, they, they, they want to start, it. they can't stick to it, you know, but he's, everything I've asked him to do, I mean, he's obviously doing it because he's, mm -hmm. how he's changed, but at the same time, I mean, I just, I don't want to push him too hard, I mean. Well, I don't know, you just got to be honest. I mean, you want him to be ready, it's, it's important. I think he'll be all right. Just don't make him cry. <laughs>you know, look the best or whatever. It's almost like a contest to see who can eat the least, you know, and, and without eating your muscle away. Uh -huh. and, and I'm thinking, well, who would want to do that? And then I'm thinking, okay, well, I know what the end result's supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, I looked at it and I said, well, this has got to be the equivalent of, of uh, climbing Mount Everest. Why in the heck would anybody climb Mount Everest? You can only stay there for three or four minutes. That's it. This is not functional to be as lean as you are, right? right? By how you're feeling. So, so again, you're, you're fighting these, these physiological instincts to keep pushing to get leaner and leaner, you know, and that's where the challenge comes in. And that's what separates someone from being fantastic on the day of the show to being just okay. Okay, so let's do uh, front relaxed. I'm going to stand back a bit so I can see a little bit better. Or turn to the right. Or turn to the rear. That's better. That's the way to hold that good. Or turn to the right. That's the way. Or turn to the front. Okay, let's see a front bicep. Relax. Best side chest. That's better. Good. Okay, relax. Best side tricep. There you go. That's the way. really good there's improvements in one week it's really weird to you know to look in the mirror and see it's really getting right. closer and the thing that's yeah. cool is like I you know as I I got certain things that I'm kind of looking at when you're right. moving around and even when you're just moving and relax you know the upper ones I can see better serratus and the obliques and everything right, are, right are, here are there no good so, Stuart good so for five weeks passing well I, grade? I think that uh, now you've now this week we went 100 fewer calories. Right. And you've been pretty good. You've been on that? Yes. Because yeah. it looks like it. I mean, I, I can see you look better tonight, which it should be the case, yeah. than you did last Friday. And so the thing is, I'm going to tell you right now, um, with these five weeks to go, you have the ability in your grasp to be beyond... I think what you ever thought you'd be at that day, meaning you have the ability to be bodybuilding lean.
seem like I'm desperate. Jeff. Hello there. You can tell I didn't, I didn't make it this morning. Yes, I noticed. Um, I'm, I'm sick. You're sick? Yes. How badly? Like a cold or something? Or? Um, it's really weird. I have, uh, last night I had, um, chills and, uh, I mean, I was shivering most of the night. No worries. has something positive to say. Oh, he's such a machine. He's a positive machine. Uh, it's a Saturday, and um, I think I have strep throat. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, the walk-in clinic, see what the diagnosis is. This is something that I really didn't uh, prepare for. And I want to show you what I've been suffering from. I, this is the fourth day I haven't been at the gym. So, so far in this journey, so far in the journey, I have had a bicep injury and uh, now I have strep throat. So, if you really look at this uh, whole course of six months, I've still been able to manage um, my body pretty decent. So. You know, I guess the word is, is that never give up. Uh, what do we do? Okay. The old adage. Uh, don't worry about the things you can't control or however that works. Right. Okay, we can't control this, but we have to address it. We have to do damage control, and we got to get back on track. You know, I don't care what happened prior to today. It's history. Can't change it. It's done. So as far as I'm concerned, let me start today. So that means to you is this on the calories. Now there is going to be an adjustment this week that we have to do, but I'll go ahead and give it today because it's the same as it was, possibly tomorrow, but no later than Wednesday we got to do the next adjustment. So what I would recommend today is come in even if it's going through the motions, you know, try to do some cardio even if it's like, don't worry about numbers today, even with this weight training. I would do what you're supposed to do with weights, but don't worry so much about numbers. Maybe do something you can do six reps pretty easy with. Just get back in the motion of it. Mm -hmm. Do do some cardio, but again, don't worry so much about beating a number. But this is more important for building momentum again because we're inside of four weeks, and we want to get the the main thing is is damage control. Yeah. But let me say, yeah. that's great in the sense <laughs> that it illustrates perfectly that. Any one of those could have been enough of an excuse to, well, oh, I can't do it, you know. But I am tired of hearing excuses from people in general, meaning that if you really want it, if you really want to get in shape, there's, there's no excuses. You work around things, you're intelligent, but I'm tired of hearing my work schedule's too busy, I got kids, I got this, I got that, the other thing. They're all legitimate things, but there are ways, as you're proving, to work around things if you want to. And yours is even more stringent because we have a deadline. Most people don't have a deadline. They just want to yeah. get in shape. So if anything, you know, and we obviously didn't plan these things to happen, but, no. it, but it, it illustrates that, you know, no excuses. You know, either accept the fact that you're not willing to or unable to work around them by your own admission, but, it, but no excuses. Because you could have taken any one of these, even right now, and said, well, that's it, I can't, you know. But we don't have time for excuses, and you're going to keep working. And we're going to show everybody that if you're intelligent and you don't give up, you can work around these, these minor obstacles. Okay. All right, Stuart, let's see what we got. We got three weeks from tomorrow, and we need to see where we're at.
July 3rd, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a July 4th weekend coming up. Um, strep throat, gone. Excellent. And uh, I've been surviving the, the last caloric deficit, which was 100 and change. Right, right. So now uh, I've noticed a lot of difference. I've broken the 164 uh, pound range, mm -hmm. and now we're below 160. And uh, um, so now we just need to look at the evaluation yeah. one more time just yep. to see what you think, and then uh, what do you Go think? Go forward from there. Well, we got two weeks from Saturday, so just a, you know, a couple days over two weeks. Uh, definitely the finish line is in sight, yeah. but uh, the reports so far are great. Now we need to see physically how you, where you're at to help me decide what we're gonna do next week. Yep, that's the idea. And you're doing a good job from the, from the ground up. Okay. Uh, yeah, good. good. Okay. Yep, you're doing well. Tricep is... Yeah, that's becoming a real strong pose because your waist is getting nice and tight. The obliques are developing and showing well. So that's, a, that's gonna be another good pose for you to really, and make sure you keep doing it like you are, which is right away, you know, getting that side done. So physically what I hope to have happen in the next few weeks and what will happen with continued execution is just tighter, tighter, tighter. My mother is very outspoken and pretty funny. We want to see abs. Oh yeah, I got them. Now who wouldn't be if your birthday was on July 4th? Now mom prepared a feast with all the trimmings and none of it was edible for me. Corn. Can't have corn, can't have that. Can't have that. Brownie. Can't you have said that. you were bringing your stuff. I know. I do, I have it right here. Oh, but you're just saying that so that you can get that. It was here I fully understood the magnitude of six months of sacrificing activities with friends and family. With only two weeks to go, my diet was killing my energy by the middle of the day. Sleep was now my best friend. I could only dream of doing something fun. His theme is roll out the barrels, and he takes the trophy home for another year. With only a week to go, the bod pod was high on my list. I was curious more than ever to see not how much fat I could lose, but what was left. Once again, the results blew my mind and shattered Adam's cortex. All he could say was, Nice. Nothing left of me. No. <laughs> I'm telling you, I just looked at the pictures five minutes before you showed up. Yeah. Big difference, huh? Big. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's really... Uh... I mean, all the, everything is right there, and we still have, what, a week and a half to go? A week from Saturday? It's like, how much more? Kind of wish we were still doing pinches to see regionally, but I mean, everything's, it's gone yeah. from everywhere. But to look like this is so much more difficult than what anybody really thinks. Right, they get guys who look like this, right. put them on that machine, film a commercial, and then... And then the guy pigs out because he can't sustain it for, you know, more than a couple of weeks anyway. Yeah. Go ahead and hop in. All right, here we go. All right, those were good. Come on out. About 158 pounds is what it had you. Okay. 6.8. 6.8 pounds, wow, oh my gosh. So you were right on. <laughs> wow. Guess I'm better than I thought. <laughs> Very nice. Wow. So that means I just might hit 4%. Because if you look at a picture of me last week, I don't look anything like this at all. See, we've been taking them weekly, mm -hmm. and just recently, it's just been whoosh, just like falling off. Because we just took one little tiny 100 calorie ultra lean. So now I can be called Ultraman for real. Mm -hmm. Does this blow your mind? It, 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 you know, you read about it, you're like, okay, yeah, that's how the body works. But then 
I mean, it's you're almost burning as many calories now per day as what you were when you're 174 pounds. Yeah, and I'm only eating 1,300 calories now. So obviously. Yeah, so you're at a 400 calorie loss. Mm -hmm. So every nine days you should be losing a pound. I never thought I would hit lightweight. I never thought I'd hit lightweight category. But we're going to just walk right into it. Yep. That's what you're gonna do. That's your last week uh, assignment. Obviously, starting Monday. Monday. Yep. And then and continue to pose throughout. And the main thing next week, about apart from anything else, is the continuance of your cardio intensity because we still want to take advantage of all those days and be lean, 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 lean for the show. Working your back is the hardest day in the regimen. So my last day on a 1300 calorie diet was tough. I was exhausted, but surprisingly very strong. I was lifting more than ever and looking great. My mind was so focused I could only think about lifting that weight one more time. Looking at this video now is like looking at someone else. I mean, I barely remember that day. And, but there's no real where else to take it. Your potatoes gotta go to half, half the serving size of it. Okay. So it's not fully gone, we're gonna cut it in half, it's gonna save you about 110 calories, and trust me, this little skim here, with as good as you are now, as fast as your metabolism going, this little skim here, you'll be glad we did it now, and it will make you that much sharper come the day of the show. All right. <sighs> Sound good? Yeah. Uh. Should I save my evil emperor lap until you leave the office, or should I let it loose now? <laughs> Yeah. Did you ever get to the point where you ever just like emotional, or is that something because Yesterday. you were no, because <laughs> no. you were sh you know you you said you were basically a shut in yeah and then so that kept you away from social activities and things like that but mm -hmm. it's like little things get to me stupid stuff gets to me you know uh, overreacting and just crying for no reason just. I think any time those demands are on there, um, it's it's challenging. But that's why it is so challenging to really get in that great shape. I mean, how many people come in and they look at your picture out there? I mean, I've been open three and a half years, and I have photos of myself up around here and whatever. But my yeah. point is, you've got more reaction out of your photographs than anything that I've had. And a lot of people come to me, I want to look like Stuart. I want to do what Stuart did. But look at what you've gone through to make such a dramatic change and you look fantastic, you look great, but you've worked your ass off to get there, right? Yeah. So you're just feeling some of the effects of a lot of months strung together. And the thing is you took it to you took it to another level. You know, you, you took it to another level because we had a specific time and kind of a deadline to get there. So we really cranked it up. Right. But it's been inspirational what you've done to a lot of people and we just gotta make sure we bring it home. And any, trust me, any little thing you go through right now um, will be all worth it on that on that day. It, it will, I know that sounds kinda weird, but it, it will. It'll be more than worth it that day. Putting together a posing routine was awkward, and if you have no idea what you're doing, you look absolutely ridiculous. How are you, how are you again in the back? I'm here. The choreography comes into play. So here, 
<laughs> so it's, it's, you have this, you have this. And you can also lunge with your back to the audience. Lean this way. Yep. And then we go. Really, I wouldn't even waste time with lunging and all that stuff. Now do, instead of that, do a tricep pose for me once. I don't have tricep pose in here? There's a little bit of, there's just a little bit of loose skin here. Yeah, good job, man. You're looking great. is with as good as you look, you have about four days to look better. So just keep using these days, and then Saturday you will be, you know, sharp as a tack. It should be perfectly weighing in right at the cutoff of the lightweight class. It should be perfect. So I'll be the heaviest of my class. Mm -hmm. Almost like we knew what we were doing, huh? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I tried to, you dropped about 50 pounds so far. Right. But if you would have just tried to drop 50 pounds and not really done it correctly with trying to build muscle at the same time, you would have looked, you could be still 50 pounds less than what you grew up and look totally different than this. I mean, you totally transformed your body to a lean, muscular physique. And you know, when you watch, you, you, know, you just kind of step back and watch you downstairs walking around and whatnot, you totally change your body. But if you wouldn't have done it really smart with how we've manipulated nutrition, kept the protein high, supplements, the whole, everything that we keep talking about, if you wouldn't have done all those, you know, cogs to this little uh, yeah. equation, you'd look totally different even though you might be 50 pounds lighter and that's the right. big thing that people got to take from this that you have transformed your body by how you did it and it wasn't by accident no <laughs> I no, mean you didn't yeah. look this way by accident we was calculated and you worked your tail off and this is the reward for it but you know I'm, I'm so excited because you literally are a walking example of what a person can do if they execute and they do a smart plan but absolutely you look great you totally changed your body Good. You know, I remember what you looked like when we started this, and I'm like, you know, yeah. we gotta, we got a ways to go, but I was confident that, I was confident the plan would work if you were able to execute it, and then you, you know, you surpassed my expectations of what you'd do, so. Uh, all right. We're a Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday night, we got two more days to go, and you got two. three more cardio sessions is all, one more workout tomorrow Friday no workouts just one cardio and then get your color on and then uh, you, tomorrow you understand that you're not going to salt anything yourself right you're going to limit your vegetable portions to like a bowl and you're going to only drink a gallon of fluid right okay and uh, we still do the chicken breast and still do everything exactly stay with the same the same nutrition and same calories but we're just we're limiting fluid somewhat because we need to make sure you're under 154 and a quarter pounds and one of the biggest markers that is fluid plus by manipulating fluid a little bit we should be able to get a little bit of a tighter look but again we're not doing anything crazy nothing drastic you're still gonna be fine you got plenty uh, you're coming with plenty and then but we're just trying to get it just as close to what we deem as perfect as we can be Okay, it's uh, Friday, the morning before, and I have to weigh myself in. So, let's take a look. Okay. 156, 157. I don't know how I'm going to work it out. I don't know how we're going to make it. Need to do. You're telling me you're uh, 157 today. Yeah. Okay. So 154. You know, three three or so pounds we got to work with, but we don't want to. We'd rather be safe. I mean, they got to come from somewhere, and they're not magically going to go away. So you really got to do me a favor today, and the fluids got to stay no more than the three fourths gallon. No more vegetables. Let's take them down to nothing all right and um, no nothing miscellaneous at all meaning you know what's on that list but we really got to make sure that that's gonna be gone so um, you got your cardio today in fact you know I really think you're, you know you got to push that one real real hard mm -hmm. and we're gonna see what you're at in the morning but you might even need to keep fluid lower than that. Let me think about that before you go. In fact, that's it. Half, no more. Half, no I more. I just changed my mind. Okay. <laughs> Where am I going to find three pounds off of this? I mean, where? My legs? Nope. Nothing left of my legs. They're all 
can see the veins in them now. Had a little injury this morning. That should go away. But good grief, man. Three pounds. epitomizes why people don't like bodybuilding. Well, it's almost done, so I can return to normal. Oh, I know. What's that? I said you changed disposition. I changed disposition? What do you mean? Uh, well, you're, sometimes you're like you're right now, and other times you're kind of down. Well, yeah, you're down when you don't... Uh, uh, when you can't have cake and then when we wake up on Saturday I probably won't eat anything until after weigh-in and that's gonna oh my god oh. I the... wouldn't want to see you any higher or lower well it'll be very interesting and I will be using needles until you let me know what happens the, the second I know the, the, the second I win <laughs> What do you think of your buddy going up there for the last time? Because oh, I know you've been time. wanting him to do this for quite a while. Oh yeah, it's it's great it's to see him, you know, finally finish off his uh, successful run and how he's gonna say goodbye. Not so much goodbye to it, but you know, just say, hey, you know, it was a, a great run. You guys have been working out together for 20 years. Yeah. I think. Yep. And uh, 20 years and. Uh, it's, it's all been good. Late. It's all been good. I, and he still I, comes I, in late? 20, late in 20 years, he still comes late. <laughs> I'm going to have fun performing and letting fans and friends who haven't seen me on stage before get, get one, uh, one last look before I hang up the suit for good. Yeah. <laughs> the day of the contest, all I could think about was my weight. I was 156 pounds and needed to come in at 154 and a quarter. Weigh-in was closing in on each mile, and if I didn't make lightweight, I would be the smallest guy in the middleweight class. Guys with 20 pounds more muscle would stomp on my chances of winning anything. It's always best to be at the top of your weight class. Should be perfectly weighing in right at the cutoff of the lightweight class. We're gonna just walk right into it. Yep. Without a problem. You're saying 154 and a quarter is the yep. cutoff? He gets outside, it's hot, he can run around. Basically all you can do is sweat or go to the bathroom, but it should should be enough that he can he can get it. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's gonna go up and down the street. I don't know how much time he's got to check to get weight in, so hopefully whatever he does, he can do it in a hurry. Have you ever had to do that? I was, the closest I was was, I weighed in right on the dot at the USA, right on the actual quarter, so, but I was, I was doing this beforehand because I was in my room checking it and I was close, so going up and down the stairs in the, <laughs> in the Vegas heat trying to, and it worked because I just right on the dot, so I've been... I was doing this, but prior I've never missed it on the actual weigh-in, so this is kind of uncharted waters for me too, but there's really only one answer. <laughs> it's got to come out somehow. I just called the team and masters up there, so you got to okay. get in. All right. I have to go anyway. Yep. Alright. It's, it's the moment of truth. So he's got one last shot. He's got to try to hurry up and get up there and get weighed in because they just called the bantamweights and lightweight men over there. 
so he's going to maybe get maybe get one last chance to win, but he's, push, he's pushing the time limit now, so I don't know if they're even going to let him try it. this way all the time to really get it. See, now he's going to be really heightened in his focus, so it worked perfectly. They weren't going to let me do it. They said that time, no, they said that time is coming and gone. We can't be holding you up. We can't be holding everybody up. I said, I went to the bathroom and I came back and there was a long line going on here and I said, look, take me two seconds. Take me two seconds. And he goes, all right. So I step on the scale, boom. I'm at the very top of the lightweight class. So now back on task. Yes. You got the numbers you need. Have you and have you already checked in everything you need with the lightweight class and everything? So yes. you're all checked in. The only thing that I don't have is uh, they haven't taken my music or anything yet. Okay. And they haven't taken it from anybody yet though. No, not that I know of. Okay. So, so just just, just got to make sure that now that this is behind you, back on task. We'll start getting in some nutrients, hard carbohydrates. A little bits of water and just make sure that everything is all the i's are dotted t's are crossed music's handed in all that stuff so i'm very i'm very anxious to see i have no idea who's in this class i didn't see anybody up there i don't know how tough it's going to be but i'm just anxious to see him up there and, and doing everything that we practice you know and he's he's i believe he's as good as he can be today given where we started and the time we had and where i think he's as good as he can be so that alone in my mind he's already won so now i'm just anxious to see him stacked up and uh, let the chips fall where they may, but he's uh, he's ready. He's, he's as ready as he can be today. What about you? Are you ready for tonight? I'm very ready for tonight. Yeah, I took it. I took it serious. I feel happy about uh, the condition I'm in for guest posing. So I'm I'm excited to get my one last time on stage and then uh, focus on the new, new things ahead for me. <laughs> <laughs> She's excited. It's almost over with too. I'd say he took first in the lightweight opens and I think it's really close first or second in the masters um, if I were judging it I would have given him first not only because I'm biased but I think overall he's a little bit better yeah than the, than the other guy that but but I, I think that it's pretty sure that he's uh, top two in both because they called his number for drug testing for both which is a real good sign because typically I mean it's there they're testing test yeah to, they're testing one and two so I we see. know he's one and two in both of those, it's just a question of which one. And this is the tricky part about bodybuilding, you know, being subjective, you know, I, I always, that's why I never, I never like to say, well, 
that's for sure, even when it was my own self, but yeah, I have a strong feeling he's won the, the uh, men's open. And you run around second place here in the lightweight class tonight. Number 34, Stuart McDonald. Your winner here tonight in the lightweight class. Third place in our Masters Division. Number 34, Stuart McDonald. Well, there you have it. I did it. And now I look like Jeff, the guy that's in all those ads. And I have not one, but two trophies. A win, win, win. The contest was everything Jeff said it would be. It was a blast, and I can proudly say I was runner-up in the Michigan State Bodybuilding Championships lightweight division. There isn't a single person in my circle of friends that can make that claim. On the positive side, it is possible to look like the guy in the ad. You don't need a book, complicated machine, weird diet, or pill. And there isn't a vaccination, nor any one single thing I did. I also didn't take any drugs, steroids, or growth hormones. I got ripped and shredded through smart supplementation, healthy dieting, and 100% execution of a well-thought-out plan. Plain and simple, it was old-school hard work. Nothing more, nothing less. On the negative side, achieving single-digit body fat is totally unreasonable for the majority of people with real lives and families. It's unsustainable and unhealthy. And to give you a perspective, within three days of this contest, my abs were gone and I gained 10 pounds. On the flip side, you can have a more fulfilling life with 15 to 20% body fat, like in this photo. Maintaining it is much easier, but remember, you can only get there by combining both diet and demanding workouts. We spend billions a year looking for the easiest way to transform our bodies. There isn't an easy way. However, there are three basic rules that if followed to the letter will produce dramatic results in six months. First, build more muscle by lifting heavy weights. Second, do 16 to 20 minutes of hard cardio at least five times a week. And third, eat calorie-restricted healthy food and smart supplementation. So why is it so hard for people to grasp? Well, Barnum said it best. There's a sucker born every minute, and the fitness and supplement industry can see you coming a mile away. We buy health products because of their claims and the lure of looking like the guy in the photo. Well, forget it. The claims are phony and the photo is misleading and in some cases completely fake. Well, let's examine the photo. Fitness models are usually photographed after months of strict dieting under the best lighting, totally tanned and oiled up. After the shoots are over, they go into the off season, eat normal food and lose their abs just like the rest of us. Next is the claim in bold letters. See your sexy abs in eight weeks. Well, that's just impossible. But the ad gets away with it in the disclaimer. Results may vary. Or, for best results, combine this product with a healthy diet and exercise. No wonder why people are so frustrated. Everything they try doesn't measure up. Or getting results requires you to follow ridiculous instructions. Like the one in this old film. This one doesn't do anything. Here, let me show you. You wear it this way when you go to bed. This end fits into a pan of water. Of course, you must lie with the head pointed to magnetic north and your body parallel with the magnetic field. If you look back in history, there used to be snake oil salesmen proclaiming cures of all kinds with their liquid elixirs and newsreels exposing quackery. Here's my favorite one. Today's doctors, drugs, and medical devices truly work medical miracles for young and old alike. But there are some as phony as a $3 bill. Like this Zeret applicator, for example, which has claimed to cure arthritis with Z-rays. There are no Z-rays. Nothing has changed except the volume of misleading information, all designed to confuse us. So we'll buy more products. Well, brushing aside any great claims or miraculous photos, the plan I followed fit on a single sheet of paper straight out of the head of Jeff Willett. And behind that paper is 20 years of experience, hard work, and sweat. Like Jeff said, you can achieve great things. All you have to do is execute. That's what I did. 
and so can you. And if anybody tries to sidetrack you, tell them it's a matter of life and death.